Hello. Welcome to our broadcast number 11. We're Country Stitchers. I'm Deb. <laughs> oh, I'm Liz. <laughs> Who are you? Hmm, let me guess where I want to be today. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hello. This is Deb. <laughs> We'd like to welcome you back, those of you who have been watching our videos, and also welcome any new viewers, um, especially new viewers to Floss Tube. Yeah. Um, and if you're checking out our channel, we thought we might mention a couple of other channels if you're new and you might want to give them a, a review and take a look. Um, Vanna Pfeiffer at Twisted Stitcher does wonderful videos she does a lot of tutorials um mm -hmm. she's very good at what she does and mm -hmm. she's fun to listen to and watch mm -hmm. and kitten stitcher um kitty if you style? like kitties you'll also like her uh videos because there's a lot of guest appearances yeah. in her videos yeah. from yeah. her kitties that's fun and she also is a designer um for shakespeare's peddler mm -hmm. so uh that's two of them you might want to mm -hmm. take a look there's at so many oh my goodness though yeah i mean how do you just narrow it down yep We'll keep, we'll keep referring you on to a couple of them as we go. Mm. Um, so many. Amazing, wonderful people. This time in our video, we like to start by talking with you about some of the things you've talked with us about in our comments. Yes, so, and thank you. Oh, my yes. goodness. I love reading your comments. You are all so sweet, so nice, and so creative. You have such great ideas. Um, so anyway, we'll just start with a few people um, that we'd like to uh, mention. Um, Angela Rogers. She loves Gadget Corner. Who doesn't? Gadget Girl. Um, she wants to know if we use hoops to stitch on and what's a good wood one. She does not care for Q-snaps. Uh, now, I, I like Q-snaps. Um, do you have any ideas? I almost feel like I'm copping out on you because we met over Q-snaps at yeah, the very first yeah, yeah. Um Actually, I do like Q-snaps, but I do like wooden frames and scroll rods for some things. Oh, yeah, I like scroll rods. Um, the... The Q, or excuse me, the wooden hoops. Um, I don't have, but a couple by a company called Duchess, and they do really grip the fabric. They're the ones I found at the thrift store. Okay, but they they do leave marks because they're very tight. Yeah. Um, there was a a hoop mentioned at our retreat by some ladies called um, Hardwick. I okay. think was the name of it, and they didn't have them in the shop. I was going to go over and take a look. Um, so that's about the only thing I know for something that I've heard discussed. Okay. I would recommend using a scroll rod um, if yeah. you're looking for something wooden. Um, and you can yeah. get those small enough to fit on a lap stand or large enough to sit on a floor stand. True. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right. Um, Amy Pinkelman. Um, she had a great idea for uh, when we talked about the thread conditioners last time. Ah. She's, and she thinks she got this idea from Primitive Stitcher, she thinks. But she said, go and buy some silicone earplugs from Amazon because it's the same material used in Thread Heaven. And then buy one of those contact lens holders, you know, the right and the left, and put a little blob of it in the right and in the left. And then when you go to use it, keep one side specifically for white and accurate thread and the other side for the colored threads. So you don't ever have to worry about colored fuzzies getting in your Wow. Ankle. Yeah. That was clever. Very, so very cool idea. So the are on earplugs. The silicone earplugs. Anyway, oh. I thought that was a clever idea. So My husband has I went some. Into, I went into McKenna's long. room, and I stole her. <laughs> I stole her contact lens thingy. So I think she has a whole bunch of them around, but she's going to wonder where that is. <laughs> oh, my. Did you get the earplugs yet? Uh, I had them from Logan okay. because remember he used to have set when we yes. swam. Yes. He would always have to have when he had his tubes in. Mm -hmm. So I still had that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have some extra if you want some. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so, oh, also Laura Reed, she said she likes to use sun bleached white beeswax, which okay. I had not heard of. So there's an idea too. That's, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so the flat fold we heard from Stacy B. She said the flat fold has been released under the name Alphabet on Blanc, or is it? It's E N B L A N C, mm -hmm. and that was the Alphabet flat fold. You can probably see it back there on the shelf that we showed. Sue Hillis, the retreat project we had at yeah. Jamboree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, in our punch needle video, um, Julie Connell, she wants to know if I knew how many skeins of DMC it would need, that I would need for that whole project. 
I have no idea because that project actually calls for Valdani thread. They're not the same yeah, either. Yeah, so... I don't think they're both 8 meters or 8 yards. So I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, and she was funny too. She also... The way we were filming it upstairs in the living room, my husband and son are hunters, and we have mounts all over the cabin. Well, there was a um, snow geese up in the corner, <laughs> and I thought for sure somebody was going to say something about the bird. She did. <laughs> Do you know what I thought it was? Uh, what? A seagull. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why were we not a seagull? I had no idea I wasn't going to comment. I just thought, <laughs> oh, she likes gulls. <laughs> uh, no. No. Anyway, that was that was cute. And thank you for the snow comment goose. on my home. That was very nice. A what snow goose. A snow goose. Uh, yeah. I'm uh -huh. gonna have to I'm gonna have to take another look. Yeah. Um Shirley Davis, she asked what was the fastest way to separate a long piece of six ply? Oh. Well I I have a really fast way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take um an alligator clip with a little weight on it, clip it at the bottom. Oh yeah. Drop it and just Pull gently it. pull it apart yeah. and that will spin yeah. at the bottom and separate all the way down yeah. and it keeps enough tension on it and they actually sell those by a company called puffin the people who make okay. the needle minders oh yeah and the little uh the ones that are bronze and um okay. gold needle minders cool they sell separators remember mine no. you don't remember my separator no because Cause next now, gadget I was corner. Gonna say, shouldn't that be our gadget yeah that'll yeah. be next gadget corner <laughs> i'll show it to you um Okay. Well, anyway, she also, she lives in Lewis, Delaware. And mm -hmm. Salty Yarns is her LNS. I saw that. That's cool. That is. So, hello. That's cool. All right. Um, oh, Rose Burke, she wanted to know, do you have to cut the thread or can you leave it attached to the skein when you're doing punch needle? It depends on the needle you're using. If it's the right stranded needle for as many strands as you have, well, yeah, leave it attached. Um, if it's not, then unfortunately you have to separate it. If you're, if you have six strands and you're only using a three stranded needle, um, so you have it, to cut it, it at it, some point to, yeah, to just, separate it. Yeah, it just depends. Um, either that or you're going to have to fuss with the stranding the whole time you're, yeah, you're using it. Yeah. So, so sorry. I, I don't know. It, it just depends. Yeah, it's what hit you're or using. miss. You can use the Valdani rolls that are three ply mm -hmm. or... You could use a six-strand needle and use DMC or Valdani mm -hmm. skeins or mm -hmm. overdyed skeins. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm using Valdani and it's on a roll, <laughs> I don't cut it. I put that roll right next to me, and I just make sure nothing gets on it to put tension on that, and I'll just stitch. Yeah. 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 Um, stitching button. She wants to know if we'll be coming to the Primitive Stitchers Society retreat this weekend, which actually I think started today. Mm-hmm. 31st. Yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. It's not Thursday. No, that That's also right. brings up the point. <laughs> <laughs> we're usually here on Thursday, and today we're yeah. here on Friday. Sorry. Yeah, busy week. Yeah. Um, anyway, yes, we um, are planning on stopping by tomorrow yeah. to the Merchant Mall. So if anybody's watching and you're going to be there. Um, as long as we can remember tomorrow's Saturday and not Friday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'd love to meet you. Um, I had some people also mention on um, Instagram, so hopefully we'll get to see some of you. That would be fantastic. All right, so um, Gail Saucier, which she was a subscriber winner, she was funny. She and a few people said um, they loved the punch needle, and she just was like, "I don't know if I need one more thing to get started." <laughs> but then she's like, "But then I'm going to give it a try." So, <laughs> and a lot of people um, mentioned that they might pull stuff out and brush yeah, it off. Yeah, that was pretty yeah, cool. That was yeah, fun. it's so it is so neat to hear from you all. I love it. Oh my goodness, that is the best. Um, Angela Rogers, she loves Gadget Corner. Um, oh, no, I already talked about Angela. Okay, that paper's done. Angela almost got talked about twice. <laughs> All right, so Car Karen Perry. She used to punch needle, um, and it's been gathering dust for a while, so one of those things, she's going to pull it back out. She also loves the Russian needle that we talked about, um, and she did order one of those hoops, so it'll be easier for her to put on her lap, you know, and go ahead and get started. Um Thank you so much for your kind words. You were very sweet. And um, she also wanted to maybe see the cards that I make sometime. So maybe we'll be able to bring those out at some point. Um, or maybe that could be a demo. Maybe. I used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I did a lot of scrapbooking cards, 
held scrapbook classes here at my house every week. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, so much fun. I met her and she's done doing it after I know. she didn't I, get yes. to take any classes. Yeah, I think it was about 2008 when I stopped. You know, the kids were getting busier and our nights were getting busier. Uh, but, oh, that was, that was so much fun. So I do still do a lot of scrapbooking. My kids have a scrapbook per year, but I'm behind. <laughs> so, yeah. But, and then we have Disney scrapbook because we're huge Disney fans. So we do a lot of that. Um, it kind of also gets into that, which is a lot of fun. So maybe, maybe we could do that. Um, Once Upon a Stitch, Lori, um, she said she tried punch needle and, um, thank, did you, thank you. She tried punch needle and she thinks she may have used the wrong fabric because her thread came back out. Oh yeah. So it could be that you used the wrong fabric. It could be that you had tension on your thread. It could be that you didn't put the thread through the eye of the needle. Remember that's that second step. And I've done that <laughs> where you just, you know, you thread, you put your thread through and you think, okay, I'm ready to start stitching, Let's but go. you didn't quite do step two where you put it through the eye of the needle. So maybe that also could be it. Um, so try it again. Um, it might work. Uh, I, I'm not sure how to say this name. I think it's Ghidri. Okay, it's I-G-U-I-D-R-Y-94. I think it's J. Ghidri was... Sorry, it's J-G. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a first initial and then a last name. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Um, she's a huge punch needle fan, and she pre prefers the Russian needle um, as well. And she has used coloring books, which was really cool. And she also had a real, another really great idea. She has used quilt applique patterns mm -hmm. and punch needled that. And then I think she even said she then adds that into a quilt. That is cool. Yeah. I love that idea. People are so darn clever. Um, Lynn Burkholder, um, she, uh, and a few other people, she has a punch needle that holds a spool of thread on top of her needle or something like that. Her needle that she uses is called D-Light Punch. Um, but she's I, not sure they're still around. She yeah. can't locate them on the internet. Yeah. So we'll, we'll let you know if she finds out. But a couple people had actually mentioned that type of or kind of needle where it actually holds your thread or, or spooler uh -huh. somehow. So Some that's, that's also interesting. Um, but Lynn, you, you're, oh, you were so sweet. Um, we were, she was chit chatting back and forth and um, she used to punch needle a lot with her mom and that was their thing. And um, anyway, unfortunately she has lost her mom and we just want to say sorry. Yes. Um, we both know how that feels. Uh, I lost my mom when I was a teenager and my dad 10 years ago. Liz has lost her parents. Um, so I'm sorry, that's just all, mm, that's so sad. But I'm grateful that you guys have those memories together. That is yes. so sweet. Um, we also wanted to say about those cards that we had shown. Lots of you, thank you, gave us um, the, the Hands Across the Sea cards. You can just get them right from that website. Um, but if you do that, you'll be paying international shipping. So uh, I would suggest checking your local needle workshops. Several they carry people them. commented that their um, local needle workshops yeah. had them. Julie so. also um, from Gulf Coast Stitcher, she did have them in her shop. Um, as of a week ago, she was out of them, but maybe she has them back now. She was going to restock. So lots of different ways, it sounds like, to, to get a hold of those um, cards. Sandcastle Cottage. She wanted to know the name of the linen for my Serenity Harbor, and it was called Fog. I kept forgetting what it was called, and Liz would always remember, and she said the way she remembers it, it's like fog drifting in on the water, right? Yep. Okay. Well, that was clever. Now I'll probably always remember it because I can, <laughs> yeah. Visualize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, also had a comment from uh, Linda Craig. Um, she said that, uh, her aunt used to do punch needle back in the 80s and 90s and that she used to do them on t-shirts and sweatshirts and I thought well, that's out of the box. I've um, seen that before. I, I have Long but I hadn't thought ago. about it in quite some yeah, time. Oh, yeah, and yeah. it made yeah. me think about the fact that um, I wondered if she put muslin behind the t-shirt in her hoop when she did it to to grab the thread yeah. or behind the sweatshirt yeah. if you know and you can add a comment down there i'd love to know if she did that that yeah. would be awesome yeah. um 
there are so many little children's patterns. You could do something on the uh -huh. front of a onesie as a gift or yeah. little socks. I mean, yeah. all kinds of things you can oh, do yeah. with a punch needle to, so much fun. to fix things up. Cool. Um, and then, um, let's see, we had um, one comment. We had asked if any of you had an interest in demos or anything that we might do. Mm -hmm. um, there was one comment from Mary Lang, and she suggested um, peyote, and mm -hmm. also um, it was mentioned um, the finishing of just nan mice. A couple and people so, have, have wanted yeah, to finish a just We nan. had a couple comments like that yeah. before. So keep watching. Um, yeah. We talked about it, and we might uh, do that sometime in the not-so-distant future. Mm -hmm. so. And a couple people had maybe mentioned um, if I would do a house tour, and that is also in the plan so yeah and then one question was could you show your um, punch needle that you have oh, done and that might take I, us into our next I just brought two more down um, so I'll just show you the ones that I grabbed off the wall now these oh my gosh I don't remember I, I'm sorry I do not remember what pattern this is but um, I had it framed right up to the edge of the punch needle on this one and on this piece, I left a space because I wanted a heavier frame. So I left quite a bit of, of the muslin showing on this one. Um, this was actually one of the very first ones I ever did. So those are two, two ideas right there. Um, all right, any other questions from people that... I don't think no? so. We, okay. We've heard from some other people in another way. Yes, yes, we have some um, some stitchy love to share. Um, I wanted to show you, um, oh my gosh, this sweet, sweet, sweet little girl. She is Miss Honeypot. If you would go to the Humble Bumble, Humble Bumble <laughs> Three Stitcher. Three times fast. <laughs> yeah, um, it's an Etsy shop. She has the most beautiful, oh my gosh, beautiful handmade things out there. Oh. I've been carrying her around the house because I'm not sure where to put her because I want to see her at all times. So <laughs> I move her from room to room. Anyway, she's adorable. And um, Sally Smith is the owner's name. And then she sent some other little goodies. This adorable rose with the felt leaves on the back. And this cool scissor keep. Now she Look has those on her, on her shop page too, right? Yeah, and she put a D on there. And they're so beautifully finished. Oh my gosh. And then this. Oh, look at that. Isn't that so cute? Anyway, she is extremely talented. Um, so if you're interested, check her out. We will put a link in our below. description. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Um, we also got a very cute little card um, from one of our subscriber winners, Caroline. And I just wanted to say thank you again, Caroline, for your thank you. <laughs> Not many people take the time to you know, not anymore today. put a handwritten note in the, in the mail. And, um, that just means a lot. So you're so sweet. Thank you very much. Um, and from our girl, Misty, she sent Liz and I these awesome, beautiful project bags. Yes. I have her card inside here too. Snoopy card. Um, look how cute. And the fabric on the back. I know. And she has her own manufacturing label yes yeah, she from does luminous, luminous fiber, fiber arts, arts. yes yeah, so if you have not checked her out um please do so on youtube Very she's pretty. oh my goodness she's so talented these are awesome beautiful i'll take that one too <laughs> you saw that misty <laughs> she <did> not tell. <laughs> thank you very much guys all right so this is like our office here you know yeah 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 all right, want to show some Yeah, of what do you, our... you've been working away. What do you have oh, going on? Yeah, I have. I have some of my, two of my works in progress that I'm, I'm getting so close to finishing this. I um, hope you can see that okay. I don't know what to stick behind it. I think so. Um, I'm getting there. I'm almost finished with my alphabet. Um, what is this one called again? <laughs> Oh, that's oh the, it's either Needlework ABCs or Stitchers ABCs. Needlework I ABCs. Which. I that's think it, it is. Okay, yeah. it's a little house. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm almost finished with that, uh, that piece. And then I did some more work on my Sally Spencer. 
that's what it'll look like when it's finished. Although I did change. <laughs> you did pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> Colors, fabric, all that. I'm so I love it though. Oh my goodness, I'm Misty so happy was with funny it. when we were at the shop when you guys were picking out threads. She kept yeah. coming over saying, "Do you want to weigh in on this?" <laughs> yeah. So I got a lot more of that done. Um, this one color on here, the really light color, it's like a whitish gray. That is such a cool color. It's um, by Classic Color Works, mm -hmm. CC, um, and it's called Shabby Sheep. Mm -hmm. That is so cute. Anyway, that I love it. I love this fabric so much. I that, got that at Strawberry Sampler for another project back, oh gosh, must be a few years ago when uh, we were up yeah, there. Yeah, I want to get some more of that. It's mm -hmm. just so awesome. It is. Love it. So those are my works in progress right now. And that's about all. I did get a, well, I got a finish finish done. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Well, my work in progress kind of progressed, no pun intended, to be a finish, but it's not a finish finish. So I'll show you the end of my work in progress. <laughs> My bunny Aww. hair. My Look hair at bunny. That kitty. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. My bunny kitty is done. Oh. And I did change it up a little bit. Um, I got working on it and I set the pattern aside because it wasn't complicated to finish up. And I had sort of overlooked the fact that they did eyelet stitches in the middle of the flowers. And I put in my own little stitch. I did a um just a satin stitch, sort of in a scotch stitch. Mm -hmm. fashion mm -hmm. to fill it in because I wanted it to be a full center. Very cool. And then um, I did not a rice stitch, um, a Smyrna stitch in the other little tiny flowers Aww. in the center. I did the Smyrna stitch. So that's what cool. I can't wait to finish them. I'm oh, debating. And, and I do like the way that, that um, she did it with a little uh, cord uh, draped oh, around the neck when okay. she's done. Mm -hmm. um, but I am debating on now whether to get another piece of Confederate gray and make it all Confederate gray or find a pretty fabric that might complement the floral pattern on the front for the you back mean of when it. You, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. So that, I had not much stitching this weekend. It was a long weekend and I had both my granddaughters over um, for four days so <laughs> we didn't get much stitching in but I did finish him yes he was the reason I was a little late this morning because I did this until about 1 30 this morning I had to have him done so you guys do, you do make me stitch more because I feel like I have to get something finished oh, okay. in time and so I am actually getting more things done <laughs> since we've been doing this so that's kind of fun very cool yeah all right all right and I think we're gonna jump into gadget corner yes we are um this gadget corner you'll see a little bit later is kind of tied to a dollar store theme and you'll see why I say that later. But two things that I keep on hand that I can pick up there. This is a sample. You might have seen these in your needle workshops. Um, they sometimes have these up on the LNS counters as freebies. They did have them at the conventions I've been to at some of the tables too. Um, it's called Utterly Smooth Hand Cream. And this tube is a dollar. At the Dollar Tree. Um, I grab them and I put one everywhere I stitch and everywhere I sit so that I can always throw some on my hands. It doesn't have any residue to it. It doesn't get in your fabric. My cows love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We try to keep it away from the barn. <laughs> we don't grow cows. And then the other item is, I, those of you who have pets um, would know what it's like when your cat gets in your lap or your dog gets close to your stitching. And lint rollers are expensive. Um, but at the dollar store, mm -hmm. they have these little guys. They come several to a package. Little minis. And they fit right in my little um, project bag, carrying case, or finishing kit. And mm -hmm. I have one in all of them. And it just is nice to be able to just yeah. clean it up a little before I yeah. pick it up and start working on my next project. Yeah. I would um, move on to the next item from finishing kits. That's what I mentioned there a minute ago. Um, Deb and I have a finishing caddy that we use when we go on retreats, and it has a lot of things in it that we've pulled together um, through different classes that we've learned to keep on hand or mm -hmm. different um, uh, guild meetings programs. One of the items is by Clover. It's called a black gold needle, and it says um, it pierces smoothly through the fabric. Uh, this is the packaging. 
they are not inexpensive, but they aren't overly expensive. If you have a 50% off coupon or 40% at Joann's, mm -hmm. I think they were around $8 maybe uh, without a coupon. Um, but they are fantastic. Um, I don't know how much you've used yours for hand finishing, but this is, I just use them for hand finishing now all the time. Mm -hmm. I actually um, keep a little vial with a, um, an orange cap on it, so I know that these are my uh, finishing needles, and I put those in my finishing kit, drop them in my stitching basket, yeah. um, and always have them on hand. So I highly recommend those. Yes. And they go through... Um, several plies of fabric um, just very smoothly. I I would suggest a thimble. Um, <laughs> the eye of the needle. Or band-aids. Yes. <laughs> Deb was with me one day. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> and I pierced my, my ring <sighs> finger. Um, so you want to be sure you have something to push them through when you're using multiple plies. <laughs> yeah, not your finger. Yeah, because yeah. oh. they are really sharp on both ends. Yes, ads. they are. All right. That brings us to your my special item. Yes. My finish finish. All right, let me back up for this one. I have to bring it over to show you guys. All right, so you knew I was working on the um, Fresh Eggs Farm. I actually worked on the top part. So it was the, the top part of the Fresh Eggs Farm piece. And I got that finished. Um, so I wanted to show you what I did with it. I found this tray. Um, at just a couple bucks at a country store. And it has that metal galvanized tin in the back. Um, I think you can see that stuck some eggs on it, stuck this little tin basket. Um, and then, Liz, would you mind yep. holding that for me? We're okay. about to see Deb's deconstructive style of finishing. <laughs> I also um, stuck this little rose up here. Um, and I'll show you, let me just take this apart for you. Um, so I can show you how I finished it. Because this way... Those are a little heavy, aren't they? They are heavy eggs, yes. All right, so I can use this tray for anything that I want. I do not have to keep it like this. Because, of course, I went ahead and used little magnets to stick on the back of this. So I can put it up there or I can get another design. And now I just have my tray to use. So, okay, Liz, you can set right. that down. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um... I went ahead and used a thicker foam core on the front part, uh, which I also put some warm and natural, and I laced it all in the back, and then I covered some um, chipboard with some fabric, and then just put a piece of white paper, not well, like cardstock on the back, and like I said, some little magnets. I also put a trim of um, twine. Twine. Thank you. <laughs> around it so that was that's that finish and then for my my burlap rose i can take this off and show you how i did this and um, we have a complete deconstruct yes so this is really cute and i wanted to show you how easy it is to make one of these let me sit back down so i can can you get close enough i think so all right <laughs> did i run over your toes no i just okay. have my leg is in front of your um you so go. this little rose is so easy to make um Start off with a template, a circle template. Um, this is just like a little plastic one. And you don't have to use burlap. You can use fabric or whatever you want. But cut out a bunch of fabric circles or burlap circles, okay? Once you do that, you're going to take your circle, fabric circle, whatever it is, fold it in half, fold it in half again so that you get that little triangle. And all you do then is lay your triangles together. I have a little sticky thing back here. But you lay your triangles together, stitch them together, glue them together, however you want to do it. But this will make the, the back of the rose. Then you have another smaller circle template. You do the same thing for the inside of the rose. Right here, this, this burlap part. Same thing, you're just layering those together. And then the center of my rose is just a yo-yo that whenever you have extra fabric pieces, have your kids sit down and trace out some circles and cut them out and then sit in front of the TV one night and just do a running stitch, gather it together and you have yo-yos. And I have a whole jar that I keep in my craft room just for when I want to use for certain finishing things. So that's all that is in the center is just a yo-yo put on there. And then, like I said, I can either affix this permanently um, if I wanted to, or I can just use my little sticky dot on the back and put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, whatever. <laughs> 
So that is my Fresh Eggs Farm sign finish. Yes. Well done. Well, thanks. Yes. Thank you. Um, Deb has you, a very you. big knack with colors uh -huh. and design. And oh, over the time that we're with you, you'll start to notice that flair, especially when we walk through and see her finished pieces and what she's done with them in her house and how she's added and subtracted things from her, from her living area. It's Aww. very pretty. Thank you. Yes. Very talented. Oh, thank you. I pay her to say nice things. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I haven't got that <laughs> last check yet. Checks in the mail. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, that, this brings us down to two things. Um, how close are we to our subscriber tribute? Oh, it's getting there. All right. Well, Let me see. Let me see. I'll tell you. Hold on. All right. I'll start with our... Uh, we gave a little bit of an intro to something that you might be able to participate with us on. Uh, last video yes. and we're going to tell you about that now um, we're going to do a round robin country stitcher style yes um, for those of you who know what a round robin is it may not follow exactly what you've done in the past um, we're trying to make this something that could be larger group size and something more manageable for us mm -hmm. so what it is is basically if you're interested in participating you let us know and we need an address and your name and what we do is we combine small groups of four people and those four people will each stitch one portion of a finished piece and then forward it to the next person on the list mm -hmm. and it goes through the group of four and at the end you get yours back and it has something stitched by three other people on it mm -hmm. and you can finish it any way you want to. Mm -hmm. Um, what we've done is kept it simple. The, there's two types of um, pieces that you can do. Mm -hmm. You can do a primitive or a Quaker piece. Mm -hmm. The borders we're using um, to separate each person's motif that they will put on the piece are from a free domain, um, and it's an antique library by DMC. And the borders... Um, will be laid out two different ways. So you can either do it in a portrait style or a landscape style. Um, the piece is not very huge. We're going to limit it to the portrait piece when finished is 133 by 133 stitches. Very manageable. The landscape size, just laid out lengthwise, um, is around 263 by 86. Um, it's a variance of about three stitches depending on which border you mm -hmm. use, um, whether you're doing it Quaker or primitive. So this would be the portrait uh, layout with the divider. And each of these 50 sections is, let's just bring it back just Casey. a little, there we go, is a, um, a motif. So what your job is, is to go to your library of patterns or magazines yeah. and pick something, either Quaker or primitive, whatever you decide you want your piece to be, and pick something that's going to fit in roughly a 50 by 50 space. Mm -hmm. Now, there is some room to play with the way we've set up the grids, so it can be a little taller or a little smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll start and you'll lay your piece in one corner, whichever corner you choose. Then when you're finished, and by the way, you pick your own floss palette and you pick your own fabric. Mm -hmm. So what you start with gets mailed to the next person on the list. Mm -hmm. When they receive it, they put their favorite motif in that style, Quaker or primitive, somewhere else on that grid um, in addition to the one that was there before they received it from you. That continues until it's done and ends up back at your door. Mm -hmm. So the second layout is the landscape layout. And the border divider will go down in between the three, uh, well, there would be three divisions between the four motifs. Mm -hmm. So um, let's take a second here and yes. do our Real subscriber quick. tribute. Yes. For those of you who haven't been here before. Our subscriber tribute winner today is... Painting with Nina. So if you can get a hold of us through private message on Instagram or YouTube, you are getting a, um, a stitching journal. 
So it already comes with its plastic needle here and we are sending you some colored floss that'll kind of go with all the other things on here. And you can either write my stitching journal or do a and motif or stitch or anything or on the front of that. And then you can just keep this with you. You can write inside of it however you want to do it. We just, we love these journals. Um, thought this was a really cool idea. So Nina, um, if you can get a hold of us, yep. we would love to send your goodies out your way. Just And thank you, thank you, thank you. Yep, you can tag me or Deb on Instagram mm -hmm. um, or leave a comment. Just private message me on Instagram if you want to. That's, that's great. Okay, back to round robin. All right, so we showed you the landscape version. Yes. Now, here's the fun part. We'll show you the borders. Um, the one at the top is the primitive, and the one at the bottom is the Quaker border. And those will be um, laid out on the grid for you so that mm -hmm. you can follow it, and you'll see where the motifs get placed when mm -hmm. it comes to you. Now, there's a couple little tidbits to know to keep this doable for us. Um, we're going to ask you to send us a self-addressed stamped envelope for us to return to you the pattern, the grid layout, and um, your list of names mm -hmm. to send it to. So, for those of you who may not have done one before, you just put your name and address at the top, your name and address in the center, and then you fold this up and you send it in an envelope to us. That gets it to us, and we put our information in it, and we send it right back to you. Mm -hmm. So that's what that will happen, and that's how you'll get the information from us. Yes. I said we would connect you to Dollar Tree again in this video, and here we go. Um, these mailers, they're padded, are a dollar at Dollar Tree. Imagine mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And How much? A, a dollar. <laughs> and what I suggest is that you pick up four of these before you start your project. And these would make perfect mailers for your floss and your fabric. Mm. Um, yeah. And then when you get to the post office, um, the, the other thing we want you to remember is things can get lost. Mm -hmm. So please do it priority mail, and that way it will be insured mm -hmm. for a minimum of $50. Yeah. And you'll get, yeah. I think it may be 60 I'm not sure. It's 50 But yeah. you'll get your, um, at least your fabric and your floss cost back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. should it get lost. Mm -hmm. um, we'll run through this again, but yeah. just so you have an idea, the first time... Up a little bit, Liz. Yep, except I mean, I'm pointing right at oh, the top here for just okay, the first one, okay. and I'll bring it up. So the first stitcher sends hers to the next person on the list, which would be stitcher number two. And then stitcher number two gets that piece from stitcher number one. So this continues on around, and every time it gets mailed out, it's another level. And at the very end of going to the next person on the list, brings you back home again. Mm -hmm. And we will put this in there so you know how it works with mm -hmm. your information. Mm -hmm. You'll have a graph of that. Mm -hmm. um, we want to ask you um, to bear with us. We're going to have a separate email address. It's already been set up. We're testing it right now. It didn't work yesterday, and okay. Comcast told me it was uh, a problem with their filter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to um, have an email address established for Country Stitchers for you to send your name and address to. Mm -hmm. The dates that we're going to be using are... Uh, June 8th, we're going to open the registration, and you can send your name and address to the email. We'll keep that open for two weeks. During that two weeks, please send us your self-addressed stamped envelope. That allows us to get started on this mm -hmm. and grouping people. And then the following two weeks will be our time to get it all back to you. Mm -hmm. And then whatever time it takes for you to complete the project will be up to your group of four. Um, and if you would like to include your email address and we can include it on the list, that would be a way for you to keep in touch with the people in your group. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that you consider that. Yeah. Um, and Liz and I will both be participating too. We'll be in a group. Yes. Um, and we're going to limit the groups by country. And the reason for that is um, recently I mailed something just to Canada and was surprised at the cost mm -hmm. of mailing just mm -hmm. to a neighboring country. So if we group it by countries will limit the cost to you yeah, um, yeah. for being able to mail within your country. Yeah, yeah. So if you get it back to us or the registration on your envelope to us by the end of the second week, 
um, that will enable us to make sure you're in a group of four. Mm -hmm. um, if it's later than that, we can't be sure that we'll have that many more people sending in their registration that we'll be able to form any more groups. Mm -hmm. So um, keep those dates in mind. We'll put this information in the description box mm -hmm. um, so you can double check it. Yeah. And, and when you do, when you have your box that you're going to be putting all of your, you know, your part of the grid that you're going to be putting your motifs in, it doesn't have to be just one motif. Right. It could be, I mean, you, you, lots of different, you, whatever fits in your area. Yeah. And please make sure that you also include your initials somewhere in your block so yes. that that's always exciting. Then you know that that group, you know, you are connected and you, yep. you'll always have that connection. Everybody Absolutely. Will have, everybody will have the names of the people that were involved. Um, I just think this is so cool. Such a great idea. I mean, the one thing that Liz and I always want to do is just share the joy of needlework. And this is a great way yep. to connect with all of you lovely people um, and just have some fun. Yep. Um, I love the borders that are chosen. I love them both, so I'm not sure which one I'm going to do. But you know, the first both. thing you'll do is just stitch your borders. And after that, you know, once you're finished with your first section, you send it off. And that's exciting then to get it, to get another one, you know, back in the mail. Mm -hmm. And it'll yep. be so much fun. And um, when we get all of this out and you start working on it, um, if you can, uh, take a picture. Oh, yeah, please. Post make it. sure follow me on Instagram then because I want to make sure and and Liz I, we want to see the progress and just be able to chit chat with people and, and that would be so much fun and how you develop your group of four people and how you you connect and send information and send pictures and do whatever our way of doing this is so that you can get together with four other stitchers some of you who don't have stitching buddies mm -hmm. um, and have some fun over the summer. Yeah, yeah. And so your stitching buddy is coming through the mail. Yep. <laughs> That's yep. so cool. Love it. All right. So hopefully you're excited about that. I am. I can't wait. Um, and like I said, we'll, our next video, I think hopefully will be Thursday, June 7th. So that will be the day then that we will announce what the um, email address will be. Right. Um, and, and you can start at that point. Yes, and, and then like Liz said, we will keep that open for two weeks. Uh, we have to make sure we give ourselves a cutoff date so that we can get busy working yep. on getting all your groups ready and getting everything sent out to you and yep. get to see the progress. So we so. thank you for watching our broadcast, and as always... And thank you for being subscribers, and thank you for your comments. Just thank you so much for all your love and support. Yes. We really appreciate it. And share, share the, joy the joy of needlework. needlework. See ya. Bye-bye.